G'day. Last time you saw us, we had Cyclops here, the tribute bike to Cyclotron in two-pack primer. Today, you're seeing it for the first time, fully completed with Candy Apple Red graphics and murals. To get it to this stage here, to its final stage with the candy and the murals and the graphics on it, that actually was quite a detailed process. We first required to place base coat on, so the base coat is a very special silver base coat. We looked at old school silver base coat and old school candy mix. It wasn't just say a, a candy paint that we picked off the shelf. I customised the colour to suit. I used candy apple dye in clear and mixed the dye and matched it to the original colours on the original uh, Cyclotron that I painted back in 1992. And from that point on, I was able to apply the candy apple red uh, over the top of the silver base colour. Now, once the first few coats went on, the candy apple dye actually was very, very brilliant in colour and the metallic from the base colour shone through the candy apple dye. There's approximately 13 litres of premix candy apple dye over the silver base coat. So that's a fair bit of literage. So it's a relatively thick, but it needed it to give it the depth. So with the candy apple dye laid on, the super clear was placed over the top, ready for the graphics. At that point, the super clear was cut back and the graphics were placed on. A lot of the fine pinstriping I actually put on, all pinstriping was put on freehand then the graphics were actually sprayed over the pinstriping. There was layers of gold, layers of colour, and all the colours were hand mixed. The graphics had to be placed on in a particular sequence, and it took a couple of goes to get that sequence right. The colours had to be right, so all the colours were hand matched. And as a result, the first colours that were laid was the green metallic, the red metallic, and over the top of those two colours, the graphics of the yellow were placed over the top. Once the uh, green, red and yellow graphics were placed on the gold panels, the pinstriping came off and it was super cleared over the top yet again. You'll notice that the graphics are actually old school 1970s. The uh, 1970s was a very adventurous time for graphics. Uh, the, uh, as you'll notice where the seat area is on the bike, it's actually got fish scales on it, and those fish scales were uh, airbrushed on, all freehand, with a stencil to set up all of the uh, scales in the exact sequence on both sides, so it's a mirror image. Then once the scales were put on, there was a very light green metallic overlay, and then there was a blue overlay. So that sort of set the scales on both sides. So moving on from the uh, fish scale paintwork, we look at the tank now and the actual tank itself. I custom fabricated the tank from steel, fully welded it, TIG welded it. And at that point it was molded, painted in candy in the same sort of layers as the uh, main frame. The original tank was actually quite a small tank, so it had auxiliary tanks in it. As a result, we can't have auxiliary tanks on this one unless you choose to fit a fuel cell in it. So we decided to make the tank a little bigger so it can store more fuel in it so you can go for longer cruises. The, the sidecar is completely covered with graphics. So you've got graphics on the side, on both sides of the uh, sidecar. You've got graphics on the front main panel, as you can see behind me. And you've got graphics on both sides of the gooseneck at the head stem area. The graphics were actually quite challenging because they posed a literal understanding of which colour do I lay down first in order to give me my 3D effect and the depth. So it was not only challenging but it was extremely super exciting. My final product, I'm extremely happy with the way the graphics went down and the depth they've given me. Uh, moving on to the rear of the sidecar, the owner wanted an extra wow factor on it so uh, we decided to sit down and talk about what sort of artwork we can put on. Instead of graphics, we chose a mural and uh, between the owner and myself, we come up with a final tribute to Mad Max 1 where the Knight Rider dies in his final crash, hitting a semi-trailer and exploding into flames. So that was the actual mural on the back, but what I also did was captured the, the eyes of the Knight Rider sort of into those flames where he exploded and blew up. So you'll sort of see the impact and everything that the Knight Rider went through 
uh, in that crash. So from here, the bike goes back to the owner where it'll be assembled. So assembly means seats, engines, exhaust systems, uh, extra fuel tanks, wheels, axles, basically ready to go. I'm really excited with the final product. Um, I'm looking forward to the future of Cyclops uh, within the Mad Max universe.